Service over. 17-14. Silver, 15-18. Rachel Dara and Jenny King, 13-21, 21-19, 21-15.
Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Tony Murphy, Tony Stevenson. And to my left, Jonathan Dolan, Sam McGee. Tony Stevenson to serve, Sam McGee. Love all. Play. Service over. One love. Welcome back to BarrettIron.tv. Sunday here morning, semi finals of the Irish National Championships 2014. Men's doubles up here. I'm your presenter here, Thomas Bowen. With me here is uh, Dan McGee beside me. Hello, Dan. Hi, Dan. Um, looking forward to a cracking game here. Jonathan Dolan and Sam, uh, international pair, against uh, the two Tonys. This is a well established pairing as well. Um, what do you expect in this game? Yeah, well, we can expect a fast-paced game. We've got uh, Sam McGee, Jonathan Dolan playing on the European Two. circuit at the minute, competing quite well. Recently, quarter-finals in the Swedish Open, beating a number of good pairs on their way to the quarter-finals. On the other side, we've got the two Tonys, Tony Stevenson and Tony Murphy. Ten. Tony Murphy, Two. tall, rangy player, good deception on the shuttle, and Tony Stevenson has a lot of power on the backcourt, so uh, you can expect a lot of challenges and defense and attack throughout the game. Here. 11-2 interval. So uh, quite a substantial lead for the international pairing of Sam McGee and Jonathan Dolan taking an 11-2 lead. Um, I think Johnny Dolan controlling the front of the court and Sam's speed coming forward has maybe just put the two Tonys on the back foot at the moment. Uh, Thomas, what do you think? Right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely early domination. Jonathan and Sam obviously playing a lot of top-level talent in the last Play. three months and winning some great matches and even some games that they've lost against some top-class opposition. Yeah, so uh, recently in the Swedish Open, beating the uh, pairing of Jonathan Nord and Silver Dad, who are uh, one of the common Danish pairs at the minute. So uh, I know that they've uh, had opportunities to get into the national centre in Denmark. So that was maybe good for their confidence coming into the national. So. Um, Tony Stevens is going to be competing in uh, the Open recently, so uh, all the guys are playing international badminton, so they'll be they'll be ready for this. Oh. 
So communication there between the two Tonys. Decide which way he's going to serve. Going out. Service over. 12-4. And even though the two Tonys went and controlled that rally, Sam just turned to his advantage. Right. Wallop of the net there, anyway. No over. doubt about that. Six thirteen. <laughs> <No. laughs> oh, it's just long. over. Fourteen six. serve. 15. And Tony six. went back cross court back again on the return. Tries the one again. Let's go for turn off the smash. Service over. Yeah. Eighteen seven. Gust on Tony's face, walking back.
Second set, and again, Johnny Dolan, Sam, one love up. It's great serve by Johnny Dolan, dipping the foot Two below the net. Up. Tony Stevenson trying to push through his racket, and if you're pushing in an upward direction on Johnny, it's not going to work. He's just too comfortable at the front of the court to deal with shots like that. Confusion in the ranks. Johnny really got yeah. in that yeah. now, Thomas. Yeah. He's everywhere. And he's pushing it really flat and moving from left to right. Excellent. Right. Yeah. All over the front court. <laughs> wow. That was just so quick at the net. Four, Four, points. Four points in a row. Uh, for me, if uh, I was in this position, I would look at now to play the mid court or long box, get it off. That's a better option. Gets him into the rally. You've got to get off this defense. They're never going to win on. Good return to serve. Service over. Four thirteen. Need, need a lot more of that though. Yeah. Good well. flick serve by Tony again. Trying to get the player Five out of the front 13. court, out of the mid court. Get into the rally, then get on to the attack. They're only going to win this game if they can attack against Sam and Johnny. Again, at least the flick serve, uh, getting them into the rally. 14, um, 
again, the pressure on the front court and the mid court from Sam. Uh, they keep Tony struggling Tony. to find the gaps on the court. Um, yep. Johnny and Sam, of course, fine. preparing well now, getting ready for the European sorry. Team Championships coming up in yep, Switzerland, sorry. heading off in the 10th. So this will be good match practice to get them ready for this competition. Oof. They're just, yeah, they're, they're not doing themselves any favours even when they are five. getting a chance in the rally. Just trying a little bit too hard, maybe. Yeah. 16 5. And again, it uh, looks like this game will go out in single figures, Thomas, unless yeah. there's a big change here. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, great variation there by Sam. 17 5. He's expecting a smash. That's some drop. Yeah, much, much more positive from the boys. Moving the shuttle around, 17. trying to make the players work, trying to get them away from this fast, flat exchange. And if they can do that, then they can work the court much better. Call there Service by, uh, over. by Jonathan to his partner, 18, Sam, to leave it. Six. Their semi-final over, Kieran Chambers and Ryan Stewart have made their way through to face what looks to be Sam McGee and Johnny Dolan. Good result for the young pairing of Kieran Chambers and Ryan Stewart. Oh, clinical. Uh, good, solid play 19, from Sam McGee in the midcourt. Gets the shuttle lifted and then Jonathan Dolan hit with power and angle. Service over, 7 19. That's 7 19? 7 19, and uh, the game looking only one way at the minute. Sam found a little trick shot there. And, uh, 8 19. Dropped off a little bit for the two lads here by uh, Jonathan and Sam. Yeah, it's uh, Tony, Tony's chance now to try and get into this game a little bit. Make the players think they've got 10 points in a row. Johnny and Sam just being a little bit complacent. And I think at this stage they know they've got the game wrapped up. So, yeah, it's good by Tony. Yep. This is what we've needed 11, uh, from the start 19. of the game that fast movement onto the front of the court. Try and take Sam and Johnny back from the front court. Sharp oh. lift. Service over. He's can't finish for Jonathan yet. Can't try left in Johnny. Yeah. No. Too tall and too powerful. The angle and the power coming down then, it's very hard to get a pass to front player, so it's got to really be hitting the back line. Okay. There it is. Uh, have to say, comfortable victory there. Absolutely, yeah, I think uh, Jonathan and Sam would be quite happy with that performance. I'm sure the two Tonys would like to move on from that game, but they played a brilliant player, really, to say. Sam and Jonathan brought their A game here today. It's good to see they're well focused and straight from the off. And yeah, different class of game. The other semi-final quite close. Uh, three sets. Uh, Kieran Chambers and Ryan taking the first set, 21-15. Uh, Sam's younger brother, Josh McGee, with his partner, David Walsh, fought back, took it 21-14. And then the deciding set, it was 21-16 to Kieran Chambers and Ryan Stewart, who are currently training up in Lisbon and uh, targeting Commonwealth Games. So great result for that young pairing, and they'll be really looking now to see what they can do against Sam and Johnny in the final. So... That'll be an interesting one. So 
we'll see what happens there. Look forward to that. Excellent. Yeah. Our next game in a couple of minutes' time will be our women's singles. Rachel Dar, Jenny King, just off court from playing uh, earlier, playing in the ladies' doubles together. So, and that was a close game, three setter for them. So. They now have to uh, go head-to-head. Their, head. Yeah, put their partnership aside, and uh, both players will be hungry to make a final. Opposite side from Chloe McGee, who's uh, looked quite comfortable on her route to the semi-final, so they'll be looking really to capitalise on that draw and try and face her there in the final. Okay, we'll be back to you in a couple of minutes. Thank you.
the target. So welcome back here to our third match here today. And your presenter here, Thomas Bowen. With me again here is Dan McGee. Hello Dan. So our third match here is the semi-final game between Rachel Dyer and Jenny King. As we were just saying earlier on, they were compatriots or whatever, colleagues on court. Now they're sworn enemies or whatever you want to call it. But uh, they're, they're going to have to put any thoughts about their final ma final ladies doubles later on to one side for a while and go head to head. Give any knowledge of previous matches against each other. And does any particular player have a particular style that's different from each other? To a particular tactic. You can see um, Rachel will come out with a number of um, set rocks in her head. Jenny King, on the other hand, will be quite aggressive. She likes to play like smashes, fast with cuts. She will go to the end, which appear into the right head corner. So you can see a very typical lady single. everything right yeah again good build up using the punch clears getting Jenny into her backhand and then this time rather than hitting the slice winner she tried to mix it up by using a straight smash got another short lift and failed to finish the smash off mm, nice speed coming forward from each other good variation keeping Jenny moving and then they find the opportunity for the, the trap shot yeah that's it nice mixing it up yeah, sometimes fast into the corner and sometimes soft into the corner. Again, this punch clear into the round the head side, seeming to be the choice of the players. Yeah, I can cut Paris judge that is long. Rachel was a bit surprised. Missed opportunity there for Rachel. You seen earlier in the rally, Jenny played the flat lift cross, didn't measure quite right. Rachel had the chance to attack and come forward, but uh, when she came forward, she didn't make use of the, the soft reply. Jenny got back into the rally and, and stole the point from her. And again, there you yeah. see Rachel still using the straight punch clear, and Jenny now jumping up to intercept it. That finish was just was just too low to take on. Just snatched at it or just a little bit hesitant and you've seen there quite a long action. Yeah. Quite a long action on the swing, so that's this time mixing it up. So rather than the straight punch clear putting in a cross reverse and Jenny then being caught unaware. That's something that Rachel's gonna have to do here if she has to keep Jenny thinking. Yeah, that's it. And again, fast punch clear and round the head side. Rachel calling the shot out, giving the shuttle back, and uh, umpire seems to overrule. 
And Rachel yeah. actually uh, giving Jenny the point there. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah. Good to see. Not on this occasion. No, but <laughs> <laughs> camera is good, maybe, you know? Yeah. Great variation there by Rachel, moving Jenny all the time. Very dangerous on the round ahead corner, uh, Rachel. She's got a number of shots that she can play out of there. So uh, if Jenny gets her length off, she's going to have to be really careful because Rachel will come with weapons. But well done there by Jenny. Found the space. Last court drop. A very good placement smash by Rachel, working Jenny's backhand, holding from the front of the court, waiting for Jenny to come forward, pushing it into her round the head side, then getting the short lift. And that's one thing that Rachel does very well. She has a very good, accurate smash when she goes to finish the rallies off. Eight nine. Oh, wait. yeah, she was in trouble, but tried to dig herself out of a hole. Almost got away with it. You can see now the players uh, in the round the head side, and then when they're in the deep into the back, and they're still trying to create winners. Um, something now with the game, the way it's developed. Players now understanding that. If you are under pressure, you still have to have a winning shot. Just a defensive lift is just not enough. Doesn't cut it anymore, basically. Yeah, you've got to have variation, even when under pressure. You see the top players, especially in men's singles nowadays, when they're in the round head side, when they're in the backhand corner, they can still play long, they can play cross. Like this is really, really important that when you're under pressure, you can play more than just a straight drop shot out of the corner. Again, Rachel going for that tactic that it worked for with the cross slice, but this time missing. Interesting fact for you, Thomas. Uh, we've got Rachel here on who are playing the semi-final and the Irish number one, Chloe McGee, her auntie on the other court, so <laughs> we've got uh, auntie and niece both playing at the same time. So I presume Chloe doesn't mean like being called auntie or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, quite a young auntie. <laughs> but um, it's um, good to see another generation of players coming through in Irish Bampton. Chloe's been a dominant figure for a long time now, winning from 2007 all the way now to 2013. She's taken every title on the Lady Singles. Um, Jenny, who's on court competing against Rachel back in 2003, took her singles title. So we've got uh, all the top players on display here today. But Rachel looking for her first title, is it? This is it. Rachel would uh, be really, really gunning now just to make a first lady singles final. Impressive this year in the Irish Future Series. Uh, making quarterfinals, that was where she really made her mark this season. Yeah, I saw a couple of games in that tournament, it was very, very impressive. Jenny going around the head, trying to get the cross court job, went wide. And typically, there, Dan, when the Player serving in single, say on the on the odd number side. Where's the ideal place for position when they for a, for a long serve? Um, for in th in this situation, the girls looking to work the tee to take away the angle, so they're serving right down the middle of the court. Um, sometimes players will serve wide because they'll know a, a player has a favourite shot, and then they'll they'll cover that shot. Um, sometimes you can see Rachel might use a wide serve to open up the court for Jenny to play her slice, but then she'll be anticipating that reply. Um, but typically you want to be serving straight down the middle take away the angle of your opponent's flag
big increase in tempo since the break there. You see uh, Rachel starting to move much faster around the court. And then Jenny struggling to keep up with that pace in the last two, three rallies. Mm, but that's clinical. Little neck card didn't really helped a little bit, but I don't think she was going to get to it anyway. She wasn't making that shot. Yep. That's one thing that uh, Jenny does well. Rachel won two, three long rallies, and then suddenly really good, accurate, technical shots, and she gets an easy point. You can really see there, Rachel, every time she goes straight to the backhand, and then the very next shot is over to the forehand, keeping Jenny moving all the time, making her uncomfortable. And that's the key in singles, really. Keep keep your opposition moving all the time. I suppose it's if they're not if they're stationary, life is easy. That's it. And uh, you can see there's ten years of difference in age between these girls. So uh, the youthful exuberance of Rachel moving the shuttle around, sixteen years of age, and then Jenny with that experience, just oh, being able shot. to pick out winners and and trying to stop Rachel from getting into the rallies. Any time it goes into the rallies, Rachel's been successful so far. Any time that Jenny's got an opportunity, she's taken it by intercepting the shuttle early and putting it on the ground. That's the shots I was telling you about earlier, that Rachel's going to try and work Jenny around the court with her stun drops or cuts. Ooh, loose serve there, Thomas. Missed up, actually. <laughs> High serve by Rachel to try and mix it up a low serve and Jenny fast on to. That's out, I think, yeah. Rachel pumping the fist. Be with that. Game just starting to swing a little bit towards Rachel. You see Jenny's been caught uh, with her feet a few times, but Fair play to you. Commentator Jinx there anyway for the yeah. <laughs> for the next point. Fifteen all. And again, you see the last couple of points. Rachel just using a little bit of deception to catch Jenny unaware. Jenny really having to work hard now. Probably with the previous shot, maybe by Jenny, just a kind of a strange shot to the middle, a bit high, give Rachel options to finish that rally. So there's the opening set, 21 15. Just towards the end of that set, I feel uh, after the interval, Rachel up the tempo, uh, started to really up the pace of the game, and Jenny just looking to be struggling a little bit to make the shots. The game started quite close, long rallies, and you can see now that. And he's struggling a little bit here. Of course, uh, in all three semi finals, so it's a lot of bam from the day before, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a tough test for her today. Ready in one final, and the three set earlier as well. Hurling the what they were looking forward to. Yeah, in the top in the top ladies doubles game. Yeah, excellent semi final earlier. Um, from Kaka, Katrina Farrell and Norma McIntyre really give the girls a tough match. Current part of the talent group that trains uh, with the high performance players down in Marino Institute as soon as you can. Uh, when she's at home at school, she's training with her mother, Naomi Dara, uh, Naomi doing her coaching certificates at the minute. So uh, it's a mother daughter coach relationship. Excellent. Is she a top player herself? Naomi played a bit or more focused on coaching? Naomi was more focused on coaching, so she's doing a lot of work with uh, Rachel, and she works also with uh, Kyle McGee, who's here playing in the Under-15 Championships. So 
Um, Kyle has done quite well as well this weekend. He'll be one of the players going to Basel soon for the under 15 European Championships. Very good. Uh, a lot of banting happening in Donegal at the moment. And good for Rachel to feed into the system in Dublin in the Marino Institution with the high performance players play. So she gets the to come down and spar on occasions as well. This is a tactic that saw Jenny. Uh, lead at 11 in the first set, holding the shuttle, punching into the backhand, waiting for Rachel to come forward and then trying to move the shuttle fast. Again, Rachel moving Jenny around the court. Play back here by Jenny. I do more the same, but... Long rally. <laughs> Players working really hard there. Just feel from 11 points in the, in the opening set where uh, Rachel was coached by her, her mother Naomi that she just upped the pace a lot and since then um, she kind of had a control on the game. Jenny working really hard to stay in the rallies but not finding as many easy winners anymore. So take that point though. Yeah, well both players each give each other a free point. Look to be a winner there. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you say more than round the head again. And Excellent. Great to see, and they make it look so easy. You know, f like for a club player, yeah. you know, our movement is so <laughs> poor compared. You know, and uh, that is a big difference uh, when you see uh, club Bampton to the to the finals here and semi-finals of the nationals. You see footwork, movement, and, and reading of the game. Short cross clear from Rachel, and uh, that's one thing Jenny from her doubles. She's got a very good, powerful smash. So if you play short, she can really punish you. Uh, nice, nice variation there by Rachel. Pinned her into the car, and then just spotted maybe that Jenny was a little bit too far back and did the tumble at the net and very won the point. Good to tumble, nice close spin to the net. Any struggling to get anything off. Five, six. I can never tell Rachel if the shot was gone, if the shot has gone long or short. <laughs> She's very focused on core, Rachel. She doesn't give too much away. You know, hitting the point. She really has a focused head on when she's playing. Yeah, uh, two very different personalities. Jenny quite fiery, quite feisty, and Rachel always remaining quite calm when she plays. A bit like the days of uh, Bjorn and McEnroe. <laughs> yeah. But I suppose maybe if you're in control of the game, it's probably easier to be calm as well, maybe, I suppose. It's yeah, that's, that's one thing. Um, uh, it's a good trait to have like, uh, a lot of the younger players coming through. Being able to have good positive body language and uh, you can see a lot of the top players there, like Chloe, going through the, in her match in uh, the court there against Norman McIntyre. Looking cool, keeping calm throughout the game. Bit of a delay there, Thomas. Um, court hadn't been clean. Jenny had a bit of a slip going down, and uh, with these mats, uh, for anybody who doesn't play badminton on these types of mats, once some of the perspiration or some spillage in the court, they're extremely slippy. So if you're playing with a partner who sweats a lot, it can be quite dangerous. <laughs> A number of interns playing from the office uh, on one occasion, and uh, the court had to be mopped quite regularly yeah. on that day. Sometimes I call myself the Christy Moore of Badminton myself. I've gone to a, go to a few T-shirts in a game, <laughs> a few games. So
Oh, and that is Richard. Lady Singles at its best. All four corners being used. Finished with a cross slice. Jenny struggling to get down for it again. Rachel tried to go for the early winner there. Just can't see the point. Great movement again by Rachel, moving Ginny around. That cross punch clear. Rachel struggling twice. She's played short and Jenny's punished. And then one or two ones where she just hit too long. Just feeling to get the, the right is the angle, at the minute. Is the angle part is just not quite cross enough or just is it just length? Just length at the yeah. minute. Um, she's uh, there. This, that one. She got that one right, and you can see the difference. Just measuring. Again, the, the difference you'll see is as the game goes on. Uh, Jenny normally going around ahead, attacking that shot. Once she starts to take that on the backhand, Rachel will win the point. Le uh, that's the eleven point interval. And again, from the body language, you can see yeah. Rachel quite in control. Jenny just struggling at the moment. Yeah. And head down, walking up slowly up the court. But yeah. So Rachel talking with her her mother here, who's who's her coach for today, and um, just giving her some feedback, taking on some water, and I'm ready for the next part of the game. Rachel competing in a number of international competitions this year. She's uh, playing under 19. Oh, and uh, oh. it looks like um, Jenny's okay. pulled out. Obviously, not feeling. Yeah, I so know she can carry she's, it. she's had some problems uh, in the lead up to this tournament. Um, coming into it, she's, she's had some problems. So it looks like uh, that's where the game's going to end here. So, a um, bit of a chest infection for Jenny and. Struggling maybe with the breathing, Thomas. Yeah. You see that in the second set. Yeah. Still quite Absolutely. close at the interval there, but um, just um, you can see she's very low up there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Maybe uh, thinking about uh, her mixed doubles later on as well. Um, maybe not right just to push herself when, when she's got that coming up. Okay, that's sorry to see for Jenny coming up, but hopefully she'll recover in time. And I'm sure hopefully her Rachel hopes she recovers in time maybe for later on. Yeah, um, you can see the disappointment on her face there. Earlier in the game she was she was doing well and you see as the game went on she was struggling with her breathing and looked quite upset naturally semi final of yeah. nationals and Rachel's gone through so Okay. Well uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. We'll have our next match will be uh Main singles with Liam O'Leary and Joshua McGee. Okay. Yeah, you can expect a lot of uh, a lot of noise in this one. On court five, men singles. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Can you hear that?
Welcome back to our coverage on Bampton Ireland <coughs> TV. Irish National Championships here, our fourth game today. Our men's singles. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Joshua McGee. And we present her on the sport. On my left, Liam O'Leary. With me again is Dan. Hello, Joshua Dan. McGee to serve. Yes. Love all. Play. So here we go. This uh, has um, lived up to the billing. Number two seed, Josh McGee, making his way to the One love. semi-finals with a number of comfortable victories. Uh, started off with a win over Eddie Cousins, 21-13, 21-15. Short. Followed that up with a win in the quarter over. against Mark Cross, 21-10. Um, Liam O'Leary again, looking good on his route to the semi-final, beating Sam McKay. 2-1. 21-13, 21-11, had an earlier victory. Over Johnny Harron, 21-16, 21-12. And then a good quarter-final against uh, Mark Brady, where he saw out the match. Service over to all. So, both players looking quite comfortable on their route. So has there been many head-to-heads, do you think, between so these two? These guys just met last week in the final of the Leinster Open. Both players are currently in good form. Uh, on that occasion... Service over, 3-2. So Liam O'Leary will be out to even the score today. This is Job the over. To the game. Three, he is oh. fast, he's powerful, and he's going to oh, hit a lot correction. of powerful shots. Four, three. So you're going to expect a lot of um, high tempo, fast power shots coming forward onto the net. And from Joshua, he'll look to work around Liam, make him work from corner to corner, and then counteract with uh, power as well. Five, but two. Josh should be, you reckon, a kind of more patient player, do you think, in a sense? Yeah, jo Joshua will uh, try and move the shuttle around more. Liam will use his power. And you can see there, Liam O'Leary already getting quite up for this Six, game. Two. Always a good fighter. And this week, do you think, obviously, with Scott out injured this week, does that add in a sense of an opportunity for a national title here for... Yeah, the draw you know. really opens up. Uh, Scott, unfortunately, out due to some bruising on his tendon. Um, happened during a league match, so um, just very unfortunate not Service to be able to over. Three, got a six. Excellent record in the nationals, of course. Uh, you're looking at wins from Scott from 2006 all yeah. the way to 2013. Uh, a record that should stand for quite a while. Yes. Um, before that, we've had Michael Watt winning a number of national titles in a row. So four, um, it's six. It's going to be. Uh, a lot of work for someone to go out there and to take more than the, what's it, nine titles. So over, <laughs> yeah, seven, quite a record. four. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose in time to come when people are looking at the records and be one of these two or Jonathan Dolan, nobody's going to know probably that Scott was injured that year or something like that, so they'll have that title and nothing can be taken away from them. No, that's it. Um, so these guys looking now to catch up with Scott. So um, he's still the number one man single player, and we've got a lot of young good players coming through. So they'll be eager now to capitalise on him not being in this event. Eight, four. Nice play there by Liam. Very good start from Liam O'Leary here. Um, he's been positive from the very start of the game, and Josh has been slow to get into it. So it's going to take. Um, 
bit of work for Joshua to get back into this one. I think it's 8 4 to Liam. Oh, great oh, finish. Uh, Sam is over. Fire Five, coming eight. here from both players. Not really working the shuttle around the court, but semi finals, Thomas. Sometimes that's what you can expect. Both players trying to get maybe the nerves out and get settled in and just hitting the shuttle hard at the minute and not, not working their opponent around the court. See Six, again, a quite eight. a simple return of serve error. Um, I feel like uh, this game still has a long way to go. Liam take his time here. Three points. Pushed wide. Service over. Just Nine, wide. six. And again, uh, a simple unforced error from Josh McGee, giving Liam another point there. Uh, Liam, UCD student. You know he's got a scholarship from the, uh, the university this year and it's been a big help towards his badminton. Well, Seven, nice shot, over. Get away with it. Seven, nine. That's his big breakthrough this year coming in the Irish Future Series. Um, he was for the finals there, beating a number of good players along the way. Before losing out in a close three set match against uh, Keisty of Finland. Who Eight, was in the nine. Final. And where does Josh trade normally? Where is he? Both these players, uh, now Joshua, full-time training in Marino Institute of Education down in the, the High Performance Centre. So uh, he's training full-time. Uh, Liam O'Leary, he's uh, studying, more, uh, studying in UCD, but he trains in Marino Institute of Education as well. So these guys would be sparring quite regularly together and um, they, they'd be well aware of each other's games. But a um, good group of young players coming through, you've seen in the Nine semi -final all. men's doubles, David Walsh. He's also living in playing down there and these group of boys now are really pushing each other on so Excellent. it's the first time really Ireland has a, had a national centre where it's bringing all its best Ten, players nine. into one area and they're living there training there, studying there so it's really a bright future for Irish Bampton at the minute So one of the big things that uh, has come in place since Richard Vaughan has come on board where he's, he's created this national centre and this training environment the environment Scott probably would have loved to have had probably when he was at that Service age. Service over. That, Ten. That sparring and that, you know. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really a big change and uh, with the, the appointment of Irwin Sayak coming in as well, uh, Indonesian coach, so he's coming in as talent identification but a, a great asset to have in terms of coaching and his experience of being a top world player, top 10 in the world, will be invaluable for these young players coming through and Having Richard Vaughan as CEO, he can all 11, also offer 10 a, interval. A top 10. Number 7, I think he was when he was at his highest in the world. So yeah. you've got a wealth of experience yeah. now within the, the setup. Yeah, and it's great for these players. They don't have to, they're all made making huge sacrifices that at least they don't have to go to Denmark or something like that, that they can stay here, which is which is a big plus, I'm sure, for all their families as well, because it is that the sacrifices are made are, I'm sure, we don't even really. Club players don't realise what they're having to, to make. Yeah, both uh, Sam and Chloe are uh, currently living and training there as well. So Chloe McGee and Sam McGee both left uh, home after they did their leaving certs, um, moved to Sweden. Uh, they were training back then Fort with five, coach 20 was seconds. Tommy Reedy. Uh, five, this was 20 in a seconds. club in Sweden. Um, so Tommy was the first coach for these guys, so they had to move away from home. Um, thankfully now, with the system in place, both players are able to live at home and train there um, and uh, doing quite well top 40 in the world in mixed doubles Chloe top 40 in the world in uh, lady singles and um, uh, it's great to see players being able to 11, play at that 10. level training in Ireland we've got the likes of the guys from Ulster uh, Johnny Dolan David Walsh from Connacht all coming now and creating this environment which it takes to great world class players yeah. 12, 10. Liam happy with that one. <laughs> Fist across the net. <laughs> Very positive start yeah. from Liam. Um, he's 
really trying to state the fact that he's here to win this match and it's been working for him so far. Play so, but he got away with it. Where Liam's control the game well so ten. far is on that net. He's been spinning, kicking it early, getting a short lift and then punishing Joshua. So 13-10 up to Liam. Oh, a high again, Thomas. Yeah, he's getting away with it. He let the minute. Joshua maybe oh, over the roof. Over yeah. overusing his attack and 14, out of balance 10. when he hits that smash. Liam then counteracting this with a simple block to the net, taking the net high, spinning, and again winning through that. Service over. 11. 14. Yeah. <laughs> this was on the line, Liam. Liam getting quite frustrated <laughs> by that line call there, but the uh, umpire calling it uh, Liam, to be on please. the line. Pass over the shuttle, thank you. Hard to see from here, Thomas. Yeah, from, and, but to be honest, I thought Joshua played that really brilliantly, and it, it did deserve 11, to win the 14. point. He was moving the shuttle around very well, but yeah. <laughs> Liam might disagree hey. with you there, Thomas. <laughs> And interesting to see now how Liam deals with that. Um, sometimes when a call doesn't go your way, it's important to, to put it out, out of your head and concentrate on the next point. So it's that uh, adrenaline and rush of blood that you've got to control. Ian, similar shot. Well, How's 14. it going to be called this time? No arguments this time. And uh, two, two quick points on succession <laughs> for Joshua with that straight lift down the line. Oh, yeah. Liam moving quite fast off there. Yeah. 12. <laughs> and Liam, he like, just walked off court, walked on, uh, just serves, and then just banged straight away, as if I wasn't ready, but I am, kind of, you know. <laughs> he was like, we see him bolt out of the blocks there and capitalized on it being yeah. early and stopping the shuttle in front of Joshua. Service over. 13, 15. Fast off the net, giving Liam less time on the shuttle and forcing the unforced error from him. Yeah. Oh. 14, 15. <laughs> Another dispute. Both players He's trying to uh, influence the, the lines judge, or 14, the, sorry, the umpire on this occasion, but um, it's uh, Josh's call and he's called it out and no overrun the replay here. Player. Looked fairly in from here, but hard to tell. Shuttle's moving so fast. Beam. <laughs> Umpire's calling Liam over. You're Ever. calling your side. He's calling your side. I'm giving you yes, and I see it. <laughs> Umpire reminding Liam. They call each other sides, but she has the right to overrule if she wants to. As is her prerogative. Mm, the He's tempo now is, yeah. is, is coming up yeah. as, as the challenges on the line calls are happening. Ah, uh, Liam. I think that was the first oh. time we've seen Liam miss that net shot. Um, uh, that's where he has to now really He's keep his yeah. temperament. And yeah. you see Either way, he fired the shuttle there. He's still, he still annoyed over that uh, overruled by the umpire. And that's like, what, six, seven rallies ago now. That, that was the first time we've seen him miss a uh, net spin, and that's really where he's controlled the game so far. Again there, you see, both players Service trying over. to control the net. 16, Liam taking 15. it, making the winner. So he needs to be able to keep his calm and, and play these shots, because that's what's got him into this winning position so far. Again, similar smash, round ahead. Service over. Joshua 16, lifting, Liam going all. for power. And just missing out. Yeah, yeah I just feel like uh, now the net is. Um, Seven over. Shot. It's Seventeen. Just gonna control 16. this match, and Liam once again coming out on top there. So 17 16 to Liam. This game finally poised. Oh, that's a over. Here. 17 all. Liam frustrated. The flicks there. 
may be a good option, but was just too short on this occasion. Again, laying fast off the low serve, really putting Josh under pressure. Good to see him moving fast onto the shuttle. Again, their variation from yeah, the back. Bit of deception, time. yeah. Bit high. Yeah, just a little bit loose from Josh there. Service over. 18, following up onto net, pressuring 17. onto jo uh, Josh's chest. Just uh, looks, Josh is a bit um, tight in his defense, and uh, it's not just uh, going into court far enough. Both players making simple errors here. Service Ian over. Too high 18, off the serve from all. Semi-finals, both players have never got past this phase before, so maybe there's an element of pressure. Variation by all players leave it out. 19-18. Yeah. This is the first time Josh has led in the match. 18-18, yeah. 18, um, yeah. Oh, both players working a long rally and hoping that... Um, oh, string break. Yeah, yeah. That's going to dis disappoint Liam there. Maybe not realising Josh had broke his string and... <laughs> Lucky for Josh to win that point. Yes. If we would have went on maybe three, four more shots within the rally, that could have been a, a big difference because uh, it's very tough to play with your strings broken. Racket begins to lose tension and shots begin to fall short and into the net. Yeah. 19, Once or twice I thought it was just me actually, but then I looked at the racket and. <laughs> 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 yeah. Usually it would be. Oh. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's over. Again, once again, Josh is serving low. Liam rushing it onto his body. And uh, that, that's been a, a common trait in this game. It's worked well for Liam. It's a 19 all Big point here now for this fir first game. Both boys, 19 years of age. Just out of juniors now into the, the senior Bampton, so Oh, that's an yeah. extremely good net exchange. Oh, oh, great shot. Service over. That, that 20, was a game very point, brief shot. 19. 19 all, Thomas. Yeah. Round ahead. Drop slightly yeah. out of balance, but brave enough to go for the, the stop drop. And Ooh, he's flirting with that roof again. Oh, oh, oh. I thought it was going to sneak over. Once again, 20, though, yeah. Liam oh. high on the net, taking on the spin. Forcing that short left. We've seen it before where Josh has hit the roof off that as well. Because Liam is really playing close to the net. Um, I feel if Josh is to take control of the match, he's going to have to take that away from Liam. Um, he played him last week in the Leinster Open and very much controlled the front of the court. And he was attacking more. Today, Liam has been the better player at the front of the court. And then Ingen getting the lift. And how do you... What, how do you deal with that? What do you? What kind of shots? It's all about uh, being brave, coming forward, and being fast early onto the net. And um, at the minute, you can see Liam's every time coming forward, either pushing onto Josh's chest or he's high playing the tight tumble. There, Josh is this time challenging him, and he gets a lift, and then he gets a tack again. See, Josh high on the net. And to me, that's what's going to win this game. That time, Liam getting the advantage. Oh, went oh. for the O, oh, is it in? Service over. 21 <laughs> 20. Yeah. So watch. Liam hoping it was out. And <laughs> yeah. Often at 20 all, you're always hoping that the shuttle's going to go just wide. And, uh, it was a terrific, brave shot by Joshua. It was a great shot to go for. Yeah, yeah that's two shots now at 20, uh, at 19 all. That round the head stop drop and then the cross net there at 20 all. So that's really giving them the advantage in this game. Service over. Big pace from Liam. 21 all. Shuttle fast. Heading the winner there. Really, really, really uh, good energy and nice to see him get up and go for winners. Yeah. Both players being brave in the big points here and yeah. paid off for them. 
each occasion, Thomas. The level of accuracy at that level, I suppose you have to be. Play. I think it's uh, that's what happens at the club play. They tell us maybe keep away from the tram lines because we don't have that level of accuracy, but at this level they have to. You see again the net exchange affecting the, the game. Ooh, ooh. Big over. fire by Josh and McGee again. 21. Bang on the line. Bang on the line, yeah. Fantastic play. But set up again from the net play. Uh, you asked earlier what, what, what your options if someone's controlling the net. Sometimes it's better just to push it past the service line into the neutral position so the player can't spin. Um, You'll find that uh, when you're up there challenging, you're losing all. the net. Sometimes it's better just to push them off it. But yeah. um, at the minute, it's been quite equal. Sometimes Liam getting the advantage, sometimes Liam. Joshua. So it's going to be uh, that what changes the match. Top. Top yeah. Liam uh, looking to break up the play, the looking to tell Josh. Uh, <laughs> not happy with the decision. Uh. Again, down to the umpire. That one yeah. <laughs> this feels that uh, the sweat can break up the play and might be dangerous on court then. Yeah, well, she said that... Um, a spit in his face, <laughs> so he needed to towel down. I, I don't know if that's a... Liam taking full advantage yeah. and uh, taking his time here. And <laughs> little bit of gamesmanship. Yeah, yeah. 22 all. So, 22 all. Oh, Big well. serve and Josh uh, getting over. it. 23, 22. Coming forward onto the net, a um, little bit hesitant, but... Just had so much time he could do whatever he wanted with. Yeah. Was Liam just thinking he might catch him unawares after that little interval? I suppose that. Yeah, uh, nice but break of play by Liam, yeah. and you can see how poised, ready to go yeah. off oh. there. Service and over. Again, winning the next Twenty-three all. all. Josh looking through the glass, looking at you for inspiration. There was he. <laughs> yeah. Please. <laughs> Again, Liam getting involved with umpire. I yeah. just feel that uh, at this point of the game, it's important that he stays calm. He's in a good position, 21 all. Important. Uh, Ian Heiss there, giving Josh the chance to get the good spin. Power smash, and early on the net. Good flick off the net from Liam there, making Josh a work. Ian. Oh, oh great play. Oh, <laughs> oh what still a rally, still gone. Josh it down the ground. Oh. And Liam capitalising. 24, 23. Interestingly enough, she just warned him about his conduct on court, and then I know he won the point, but I presume shouting across the court, pointing the finger, is probably not pushing his luck a bit there. So. Uh, and then singles these days, uh, uh, you can see a lot of emotion. The guys are training so hard and putting in so much effort. Uh, when it comes to match day, they really, really want to get that out on court, and um, I'm, I'm sure it's quite harmless. <laughs> but maybe. Breaking the rules a little bit, or should we say bending the rules? <laughs> oh, again, it's all over. about the net. And uh, this time, Liam just falling short. Yeah, you could see he was trying to do. Fair enough. It was, if it went over, it was a winner. Yeah, uh, you know. And not only that, if playing the tight net shot, the pressure that causes at this point in the game. You can see the both players quite aggressive. Net cord coming to Liam. Service over. There. Twenty-five, twenty-four. Take a full advantage of it. Another, Another game point. Game point yes. yeah. This is a good test of uh, these young players. Seeing how they handle these kind of situations. It's often good to see. Again, in from the first shot, setting up. Oh, Lean's going to attack this. Rush already on the body that time. Oh, simple <laughs> neck <laughs> kill from Liam O'Leary. Oh, Thomas. Yeah. He's going to be dreaming about that one tonight. <laughs> yeah. Great opportunity. That was massive opportunity. Yeah. He did everything right. Yeah. Good spin, set up the neck kill, and this game is really finely poised at the moment.
Beautiful look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Liam O'Leary taking the net and Josh lifting it up. Test of fitness here as well, yeah. Thomas. It's a fitness medal. It's a great, it's a good, good test for Game changing shuttle. Good time to change the shuttle sometimes. Uh, when you play a serving now, can be a little bit difficult to decide whether to go for full pace or not because it could be fast, could be slow. See Joshua lifting there, free. <gasps> looks to be going out. And he so should have finished that one at the net. Short lift though. Oh, again. Short lift again. Liam O'Leary defending for his life here. Joshua constantly attacking. Oh, great net. tumble. Oh, yeah. Full court lift from Joshua. Oh, hi. Oh! Oh, oh no, it didn't go over, yeah. That <laughs> was an <laughs> unbelievable rally. And again, the net court <sighs> not falling in favour of Liam O'Leary. Yeah, I thought it was going to sneak over there, but no. <laughs> this game is going to go all the way. Liam relentless in defence there. Joshua being so brave, spinning the net, attacking. I think he had an opportunity earlier in the rally to net kill, but you can't really blame him. Yellow car for Liam O'Leary. Yeah. I think that was a bit harsh, Thomas. We can't hear, obviously, yeah. here in the comedy box. She just said, yeah, yeah obviously, she, it was over the walkabouts, but yeah. I didn't think that was one of his worst walkabouts yeah. that he'd done. So. I can understand I the frustration a little bit, having the game point. But. And to be fair, he's doing them on his own points, not just when Joshua's serving. Service over. Yeah, no, like, good 27, 26. So, 27, 26. This is. Should be some game. Liam, he must have had about five or six game points, and he surely must take one of these. That's yeah. all high, yeah. High serve, and Joshua <laughs> choosing to spin while they're on attack. Oh, good, good net by Liam. And there's the attack Ooh, shot. Here. Fast onto it. Oh, a great <laughs> retrieval from Josh. Both players defending well. Surely this is going to be. It's got wide, is it? Oh, yeah. Over. Liam O'Leary. 27 <laughs> As the rally went on. <laughs> Just seeing the Feeling to get behind the shuttle and. The crowd are yeah. on the edge of their seats here. Just seeing the action replay there as well out. Josh is choosing to fix serve. Liam's attacking it, and here we go. Good net spin by Josh McGee. Oh, is he going to show us to get it right? Yes. And again, the net spin <laughs> proving crucial. Liam O'Leary lifting long. This is the first time now that Josh has a game point. Not a bad time to get it down the head. Defense on Liam, a nice slice. Josh is working hard, just scraping the shuttle back. Oh. Oh. Game. It's game. So what looked like was going to be uh, Liam O'Leary first game win uh, has really flipped on it uh, as a first coin. First game won by Josh Joshua McGee. Taken the first game. 29-27. 29-27. The umpire just caught it there. That's Liam leading throughout the game. A uh, number of game points there and and quite an innocuous finish then. It was just a, a clear that was about way out. So Maybe just a tired mistake, yeah. Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, I, I let him off over that one. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see there, Liam trying to fuel up for the next game. And that's, that's going to be tough now uh, mentally on Liam because he did so well through, during that game. And then just to, to give him an easy point like that to win it. Yeah. Um, Joshua having to work really hard to win that game, fighting back a number of times from game point down, long rallies. Um, I feel like at the start of the game, Liam dominated the front of the court, got the spins, attack, and I felt that Josh's defense was a little bit too soft, a little bit too high at the net, and Liam was killing. Towards the end of the game, Josh is starting to get a better defense, uh, pushing it into court further, so Liam couldn't get those net kills. Um, so it's going to be very much a, a battle of who can control the front court and then who can work the angles and, and look to kill that way. Winner 
playing the winner of uh, Johnny Dolan and Stuart Lightbody. And that match went in favour of Johnny Dolan. And it was uh, quite a comfortable victory for Johnny, the number three four seed in this event. 21-9, 21-11. I know Stuart uh, had a bit of a problem seconds. with his appendix a number of weeks ago, so um, maybe just not fit enough to, to handle the speed of Johnny Dolan on this occasion. And I'm sure Johnny's quite happy to see these two lads batter each other 29-27 in a game. He says, yeah. yeah, keep that going, lads. Yeah, Johnny. John <laughs> Spend all of what energy yeah. you have left. Yeah, Johnny would be quite happy to sit at the back of the Second court game. and watch these guys uh, a long, hard, Eight. hot set. <laughs> Service over. A lot of uh, nets been followed by smashes. Um, it'd be nice to see a little bit more rallying in these games, but it seems to be what's winning the point for the guys, so maybe they want to stick to the tactic. Service over. One these first four. few points will be, will be interesting to see how Liam Copes is it to have committed Service 27 over. points, Two. you know, a lot of energy, Second 27 Second points, Second and not to have won the, the game. Direction. One love. Bit of a no. fusion here. Liam, uh, yeah. <laughs> needs to stay cool here, Thomas. Um, one love down and Two, one. one game to nil down. He needs to oh, really start the thing. One all. Thank oh, you, Liam. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Liam and uh, the umpire are conversing on the score here. <laughs> He's eventually smiled. <laughs> The situation, yeah, one all. I think, right? I think Umpire looked across the Tamagraya to let's see if they could agree. Two, one, two, one, and uh, off we go again. Service so over, two Liam all. Moving the shuttle fast, and Joshua not quite behind the shuttle, using power in that situation is not a good decision. That's it. Great left by Liam Cleary. Yeah. Three, Joshua two. Joshua being quite aggressive coming onto Liam's body. And Liam dealing with that quite well. Uh, good. Four, good two. Smash from Joshua. Block from Liam. Smash from Liam. And a uh, poor block from Josh. So again, uh, the game being dominated by a lot of attacking play. Again, it's yeah. Service <laughs> over. It's almost Three, like a man's doubles this game, yeah. Thomas. I think probably because they, were so <laughs> they don't want to have another marathon match rallies here. They uh, said, let's get these rallies over quick. All attacks so far. Stop at the net. There now, Josh is starting to use a little bit of variation and quite successful for him. What I would like to see uh, a little bit more of is maybe both players using the, the punch clear or over. doing something to Five, make the opponent move away from yep. the front court, open up some more gaps at the front, very much downward attack and push them into the corners and yeah, yeah open up the court like this one. You're actually starting with a punch clear this time, lifting lean long, and then creating space at the front of the court for the slices or the cuts. It's uh, moving the opponent much more and this time you Service get the over. Four, five. I think that's the big difference between um, Junior Bampton and Senior Bampton that uh, they can play both the attacking style and they can play the rally style and knowing when to do it and uh, that's going to be very important for both these players development if they want to be able to compete against the better players in the world that they can play that rally game yeah. as well five, as the all. hard aggressive style but you can see that yeah at the top level the patience the moving around the court and the accuracy, you know, I'll be watching some of Scott's games and at that level, the accuracy to the cars is just unbelievable and Six, the consistency five. that they're having to do it, you know, like they're not just doing it two or three times in a row, it's 11, 8, you know, 11, 12, 30 times in a row in a rally, like, you know, just kids. Watch some of the top players nowadays, like uh, Li Chong Wei against Chen Long, with a 30, 40 Sam shot Silver. rallies, both players Six, having all. phases where they're playing clears and lifts and then parts of the rallies where they're attacking and spinning the net. It's uh, being able to have that change of pace Jab between over. rallying and then suddenly Seven, when you have that six. opportunity to take it and to, to lift the speed and lift the tempo. And at the minute it's uh, a little bit of uh, both players attacking and 
not a lot of the shuttle being rallied around. It's starting a little bit more here now for guys to lift the shuttle into the corner, make each other work and then wait for the opportunity and then attack. Oh, there, yeah. Clever shot from Liam this time. Seven, all. Just a lift, maybe just that large enough and Liam pumped in the early reply. Point. Eight, seven. Eight, seven. Josh Gord for the early winner there, just pushing it wide. Service over. Eight, all. Liam definitely playing a much faster and much more controlled game than he did last week. Um, just feel like the more Nine, this game goes on, eight. that it's uh, starting to favour Joshua. Yeah. As Liam's starting to slow down a little bit here, take his time between rallies. Might be a tactical decision of Liam, or, or maybe he's just starting to feel the, the long first set. Um, I think if the interval comes, Liam will get a break and he'll come out fighting again because he's, he's one of the best fighters that's out there on the Irish circuit at the minute. And you see that. Ooh, I think he jumped there, yeah. actually. I think that's what Josh is complaining over. about. Nine again. all. Liam jumping but the serve, but that's that away. a so clever decision by him. Yeah. Moving fast off the serve and, and, and earning the point. Sometimes you've got to make your own luck. Yeah. But you can even see here, Liam, as you say, even when he's serving, he's taking his time. Just this little walk around. Umpire yeah. looks at him. <laughs> he looks at <laughs> so, him. I think that's clever. Uh, Fiesa play there by Liam. Um, jumping the serve, getting a quick point and then following that up with a right oh. in exchange. Eleven Keeping nine, Joshua away from the rallies and yeah. change ends. Oh. Excuse me. Correction. Eleven nine. And Liam uh, having a right smile there to himself. Um, nice comeback for him to get the lead at eleven. Yeah. Um, nice to see the match opening up. And um Keeping the legs going, walking around. These games really important for the players that they they don't stay dormant too long because lactic acid building up in the right. legs and it's, it's a tough match. You don't want to stop. And that's five, when I suppose a crap five, could kick in or exactly right, Thomas. Yeah. Like if uh, they they stop for too long, you can see even when the, you, the tennis players are playing. And um, between the sets, they always like to keep the legs going, start to massage the legs, keep keep them working, because uh, the lactic acid will start to kick in soon. Uh, the longer this game goes on, Eleven, nine. both players will have to be hey. at the peak of their fitness, so that these things don't happen. But at the minute, the, the pace is still quite high. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Lane can keep this going now, leading 11-9. Yeah, trying to be patient, Joshua, but just not getting the length 12, there. Nine. Liam intercepting. Nice stick smash by Liam down the line. Oh, 13, correct decision from nine. Joshua, but poorly executed. Joshua flirting with the roof there again. 14-9. 14 9. 14 9 now. It's a good run of points here for Liam and keep, keeping his lead here after the interval. And from uh, around 9 all, uh, Liam's worked a lot of points where he hasn't had to work. <laughs> Liam's calling 15, it out. 9. Yep. Yeah, no overrule from the umpire and 15 9. Sixteen nine. Joshua using a yeah. bit of Liam's tactic against him there, trying to come in and hit onto the body. This time just not getting the measurement right. And it looks like Liam O'Leary is uh, starting to pull away here. Ten sixteen and a ten, substantial 16. lead. Number of cheap points from nine all. It's cost Joshua uh, the the lead and possibly this game really, yeah. Yeah, Liam's been uh, 
getting cheap points where Josh has made on for the errors rather than uh, having to work for the rally, which is great for him. And Good play here by Liam, moving Josh around the court. Again there, a short lift from Josh, and Liam using that stick smash. 11-16. Liam has played the uh, second game very clever. Uh, he's broken up the play well. He's taken his time and taken his opportunities when he's needed to. Um, he's taken his time in between the points. You see here now he's looking for the forward between. Sorry, he's um, in quite clever tactics. Joshua looking still quite fresh and Liam knows if he can take the set then it's going to be a highly charged third set and nerves and other things yeah, coming into your account yeah. either way if you can get it into line. that third set but just as you say he has to conserve energy for that third set as well he can't just throw the kitchen sink at this game so he has to control it as well yeah he's been clever he's taking his time between rallies and um, changing shuttles getting the court cleaned and that's that's a good sign of uh, uh, court fast and um, it's, it's helped him throughout the match so far so Let's see if he can squeeze out the second set. Or they're straight away off the serve. Well, Liam 16. doing everything right, <laughs> yeah. coming in, making the neck kill, and Joshua just getting it back. Just stuck the racket out, and well, it's more than sticking the racket out. Obviously, it's 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 agility, it's yeah. speed, reading the game yeah. so well, and yeah. uh, Liam doing everything right, and these kind of things can uh, really hurt you in a match. See Joshua now really making Liam work. Yeah. Good Time's smash, over. Seventeen twelve. Ian casting his shuttle. He's taking his time. I think it was changed. Yeah, church. Yeah. <laughs> I think that um, Liam's going to come with a lot of energy now just to try and see how to set. He get the interval, take his break, and expect a good shot. And solid. Yeah. Oh, Again, just, yeah. stick smash, but it's over. just not getting behind the shuttle enough. 17. Right, so just four points in it. Joshua needs to close that gap pretty soon. Long rally. 14, 17. Leave <laughs> that. Temperament, uh, Ian. That must be good for Joshua, you know, you know, <laughs> kind of. But I suppose that's just the way he is, Liam. That's the way he's made, I suppose. So. Yeah, he's uh, he's highly emotional on court, and it's a really good thing when he's winning. It's a uh, it's good body language, good powerful when he do. It, but he needs to remain calm and not show his opponent when he's frustrated. Yeah! Service oh. over. Ian, very 18, fighting. And, uh, it's good. It's just uh, sometimes getting your adrenaline rushing like that can. And make him more tired, um, but very good by uh, Liam to keep control of the game here. 18 14 now. You can see Josh is trying to work these long rallies. Packing, and there we go. This oh, is lovely. Oh, yeah, great shot. That this is, is over. the difference when the players 15, pick the net, 18. they get the opportunity to win the rally. When they played the long rallies, trying to flick fast up the net, Liam's intercepting, playing his stick smashes. Where if he comes up and just uses a simple straight spin, it's much more effective. 15-18. Oh, it's well in. 16, 18. Yeah, well in. Josh will be thanking his lucky yeah. stars there. Simple point. Seventeen. Costly. 
And now just one point in it. A couple of easy points there for Joshua. You had to put that down to tired mistakes, Thomas. <laughs> Outside <laughs> and uh, 1917 to Liam now. Poor players, both trying to <laughs> influence the umpire and the, <laughs> the call. But Good decision from yeah. the umpire then. Sure. Oh. Really that was over. Yeah. He can't believe it himself. 18 yeah. 19. And he's quite a quick server actually. He just walks up and serves. Usually it's fine, but yeah, at that time that's. <laughs> Again, the net shot so crucial. Nineteen. And finally, uh, the game is back now to even score. Yeah. Liam's going to have to really now try and use his tactics to win this. Oh, so over. Clever from Liam. So Joshua was serving. Gay point. that Liam was going to rush the serve instead. He stepped up a high base, forced Joshua to flick, and then punished him for oh, an exchange. Yeah, yeah. and has it gone wide? Game. One game all. Second game won by Liam O'Leary. 21-19. One game all. I have to say, that was a very good net exchange from Liam there at the end. I think he was happy with winning that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good emotions. <laughs> Great to see uh, the guys fired up for this semi-final for Nationals, you see how much both players want this game Yeah, um, they're really trying to make the mark and on the other side uh, of the draw, Johnny Dolan, only 19 years of age as well, so it's a young field out there I'm gonna, I presume would, would Johnny be favourite or would it be fairly even Stephen or Johnny Dolan would be the, the favourite um, of course last season when he was uh, under 19 uh, top 10 in the world rankings so the Young man from Connacht has uh, had a really good, really good season at underage Bampton, and now coming into senior Bampton, of course, not only his singles, his doubles with Sam McGee going really well. Now as high as 112 in their in their first season together, so uh, firing up the rankings. Joshua going up playing underage Bampton with Johnny and playing in similar nationals, and would have shared a number of nationals between them, but the breakthrough has definitely come through. Johnny in the, in the international scene and it'll be interesting to see uh, whether Liam or Joshua ever makes the final and they go out there and challenge Johnny. Both these players yeah, would obviously love to have a pop at Johnny they yeah. definitely give it either of these yeah. players if they, they get out there against Johnny they'll, they'll go out there fighting and um, of course a uh, little, bit, little bit of pressure on Johnny because he now will be the, the favourite to, to win this competition. 4-5, 20 uh, seconds Johnny has dealt with it Four quite five, well 20 uh, seconds. earlier playing against uh, Tony Stevenson um, that was a good match and uh, Tony Stevenson gave Johnny a good run for his money and um, it was probably the best ga game on the opening day final game 19 and 17 Johnny overcoming Tony there um, so it Play. draws wide open now yeah. third set here and here we go it's very high <laughs> shots so back on the net yeah. exchange yeah. and back on the attack yeah well in great angle because sometimes even from here I thought this was going it was going to drift out wide but just his angle is so good that That's it. keeps it well in Josh is still looking uh, quite so light on his over. feet and um, One all. it's going to be very very uh, interesting game to see if Liam can match Josh's fitness and can Josh and match Liam on the front of the court and it's been an excellent first two games so hopefully the third one's going to be as close Oh, is he gone for the shot? I think it's gone wide, yeah. Good perception yeah. by Liam there. Coming in to the net early, holding the shuttle and playing for the long corner, but just unfortunate not to get the winner as he had sent Josh the wrong way. Yeah, but nice variation. Good to see. Liam liked to change the shuttle. Yeah. Josh, I think the shuttle's fine. Since her thinks it's fine as well. So. They will resume. He likes to change it a lot, though. I think, yeah, so. yeah, it might be to more to break up the play, yeah. but... Um, Just 
interception from Liam again. Control on his backhand. Uh, much more open game now, Thomas, you see? The rallies. Yeah. Longer and Joshua and working Liam. And pushing Liam back. I taking him off the tee almost so he can't control the net, yeah. I think this is what uh, we hadn't seen from the start of the match. Uh, from both players, too much attacking, not as much variation. Nice to see Joshua mixing it there with a few punch clears. Um, especially both players should be testing each other in fitness and, yeah. and seeing who's going to come out on top. And with the attack so far, both players haven't had to work so far. Joshua getting a 4 1 lead here. And Liam ready to fight. Get attacking that serve, yeah. Oh, the oh to Raylan. Raylan, yeah, yeah. I think uh, Liam presumed once he had uh, taken the serve so early that he, he had created a winner, and yeah. then when the lift came, he just presumed that it was going to be a, a, an error, but this time it was well inside yeah. both lines. And Joshua working, taking his time, really working it. Liam doing the same. Oh. I think that's out. Yeah, well out. I think we can see uh, Liam starting to get a little bit tired now. Um, both players well able to match each other in opening sets, but uh, with fatigue setting in, it's starting to go in favour of Josh. And again, Liam looking to maybe break up the play, change You're the okay with this play? Clever by Liam. <sighs> He's really pushing the middle. Uh, to the limit but yeah as you say just break up the play and oh great shot was it in seven one yeah Ian. Liam looking up at the umpire hoping that she might call it out but no that's seven one now so great start for and now now Josh has to change it and then like seven one I think the tactic Josh is using here, rather than using the net, he's flicking Liam into the corners because Liam not as fast to get behind the shuttle anymore. Uh, Some uh, fantastic God. retrieval yeah. from Liam there, but the last one, uh, he could have probably left that one time. It looked yeah. like it may, may have been going long. Uh, great variation there Nine, by Joshua. Yeah. Just a big difference in uh, fitness levels at the minute. Um, Liam well able to compete with Joshua, but in this third set, just doesn't seem to have the energy in the legs to get behind the shuttle anymore. You see there, yeah, big serve, yeah. opening two sets. Liam was getting behind attacking. Ten, what? Now it's just a simple lift, and yeah. Joshua always getting behind the shuttle and attacking. It's Giving away the advantage on the third shot, the, the, the crucial third shot. As they say, that's yeah. it, yeah. Uh, like uh, before, Liam putting Josh under pressure early in the rally, um, fast off the low serve, ju almost jumping it, and uh, again like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. when he was being so it's over it, two he was getting ten. It. No.
play. Oh, nothing there. Well, yeah, you can see he just couldn't move, two. though. Yeah. Good to see um, Liam still fighting here. A lot of players, 12-2 uh, dying, and you would see them, they would, they would give up, but that's a testament to his uh, aggression and his fighting abilities that he still wants to win this game. 13-2. I just feel sometimes when uh, you've got the adrenaline going so much all the way through the game, it, c it can tire you out. And it's hard to peak then because you're peaking all the time yourself. Yeah. And, uh, always if you're playing at a high tempo. And, and in the modern game now where matches are going on for an hour or so, and so plus, plus hour 20, three, that's just too much. Yeah, 13. yeah I think um, it's good to when you win the big points to show your emotion but I think it's very important that throughout the game you, you keep control of it and uh, if you can keep control of that and show that when you need to show it I think you can conserve a lot of energy during the match. Yeah. Nice, so nice over. play here by Liam. 14-3. It was out Liam. It was called out. It was loud. And Liam again ho hoping that it was going to be called in unfortunately not going his way this time. 14-3. Oh, good. That's flat yeah. 15-3. Liam really, really struggling now. Good lift. 16-3. The energy's gone. Yeah. <laughs> no, if I'm training with uh, Liam and Joshua, um, I know that Liam would have been going out here looking to end this match in two sets. Um, Joshua's fitness level would just be better than Liam's at the minute. And three. It's coming out here on the, in this third set. Um, you could see the aggression and the speed that Liam played the first and second set. Really made Joshua struggle to deal with the shots that were coming his way, but... In the third set, Josh are having a lot of time on the show. 18 still early on 3. 18 3. Service over for 18. Josh is trying to get the shuttle over to the inside as fast as possible, not giving him any time between the eyes. To be honest, I think nearly Liam would agree at this stage that 44 18 down, so yeah. <laughs> I'd say probably. He knows the game has gone on, so. Service over. 19-4. Another arm force yeah. there from Liam. And 20. Match point. Four. Not his day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better fix my hand at the end here. <laughs> Thanks, man. And um, Josh and McGee delighted to be well done, in his Joshua. first men singles final. And Lee Maleri will go away very disappointed, thinking of uh, maybe he could have Match that, one uh, by Josh and McGee 29, 27, 19, 21, 21, 4. Liam in the opening set. A good display of fitness from Josh in the, in the final set there. So, that's our four game over today. We've won from our semi-finals lineup. Our next match, we already see the players going on court, is our mixed doubles. Um, it will be an interesting one, Thomas, with the uh, brother and sister partnerships on both sides of the court. All right. Two oh, chambers yes. uh, against the two McGee. So, um, a lot of people say that uh, don't play with your family members, but it seems to be working for these two partnerships. Yeah. So, um, uh, when they're as good as them, that's not so bad, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, it'll be interesting now to see how the brother sister dynamic yeah. works when they uh, they come head to head here. Maybe better brother sister, maybe than maybe necessarily uh, husband and wives or something like that. Probably maybe. <laughs> yeah. Are you speaking through experience? <laughs> yes, Thomas, absolutely. Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ne we never played together. I always made sure that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. It, uh, <laughs> It certainly has worked for these two pairs, and uh, they've both really got a good understanding of each other. And um, 
it'll be uh, interesting to see how the dynamic comes out on court as the two sisters are both older than the two brothers and sometimes uh, it's interesting to see where the, the lady can take the lead in the mix and I think very much in the case of the Chambers, Sinead and Kieran, that um, Sinead would be the leader. So, we'll be back with you in maybe about two minutes. And uh, players are swarming up there. We'll be continuing your coverage here on BabbitonIron.tv.
We are in the mixed double semi-final, and it's a battle, battle of brother and sister, uh, Sam and Chloe McGee against Sinead and Kieran Chambers. So here we go, Irish number one pairing, of Sam and Chloe McGee. Uh, number one seed for this event, of course, coming up against uh, the number three, four seeds. Both pairs looking very sharp on their way through to the semi-finals. Sam and Chloe McGee in their quarter-final taking out Ryan Stewart and Katie Smith, 21-8, 21-5, and the Kieran Chambers and Sinead Chambers beating the two Cobbs, another uh, brother sister partnership, uh, 21 6, 21 11. So here we go, and uh, Sam McGee serving to Sinead Chambers. Sinead challenge in the net, and there's an error from Chloe there, so interesting to see uh, how the net exchange will fare out as well. Sinead's left hand cutting out the shuttle there. Um, something that she does so well, looking for the shot coming down the line and you're impressing on the midcourt then. Oh, good pressure from the McGee so far. Clever return from Kieran Chambers trying to catch out Sam McGee as Sam pushed forward. Um, Kieran tried to lob it into the, the back corner over him, but just not getting the measurement right. So we look quite sharp at the front of the court at the minute. Chambers getting caught on defense again. Missed return of Sarah from Kieran. And just not settling into the game so far. But early days so far. Hey Dan, thanks for coming for me there for a couple of minutes. No <laughs> problem. We don't get much of a gap here between these games. They're quick and fast. You know. Coming in thick and fast, yep. Thomas. And, uh, this game has uh, started and there's been a number of unforced errors of Sarah from return. Um, just uh, Kieran hasn't just settled in the match so far, and uh, we need to be a little bit stronger to start. Potentially, Again, yeah. Another yeah. Uh, first era of serves. Strange at this level to see so many. Being a pair like the Chambers, obviously, experienced pair. Is it daunting facing somebody a top party in the world, or do you just get on with it that, that professional enough? I think uh, for Kieran Sinead, because they've been playing international badminton, they will be uh, they will be um, ready for this game, and they'll be looking forward to the challenge. Of course, Sam and will be playing a much higher level, playing a lot of Grand Prix, and uh, they played a number of Super Series events, so they'll come up to speed a little bit faster. But Kieran and Sinead are able to compete here. It's just a matter of um, Sam and Chloe controlling the match and playing at the tempo they know they can play at. Five to the McGee's. Oh, 
Oh, good smash in the middle of 13 the 5. 13 5 now to Sam and Chloe. Pulling away from the. the Oh, excellent. Coming forward to the front of the court. 14-5. And block off Sam. And Twit looking for everything at the front of the court. And that's what you need when you're playing mixed doubles. You need the lady to follow up for you. Once you make that block, you need to know that she's going to come forward and that you can take the back. Door. Clever shot by Kieran Chambers. That time Sam. Service over. Kieran getting on. 6 14. Seeing the gap. And over. Other missed 15 6. Yes. It's uh, something so crucial that at this level that they're not missing these serves. Quite a flat serve, but Chloe McGee there. 16 6. Shania Chambers not happy. Here and going for a smash, but being unable to cut it out. Are we missing? Is that coming? Oh, nice shot. Yeah. Felt on uh, that last shot that Sam tried to play the back corner. Service maybe over. Gap Seven, in the, sixteen. In the middle of the court. Um, Kieran waiting on the on the long one. So um, maybe just not the right decision. But good to see him come forward early and trying to force the oh. take again. Service over. Yes, the chamber. 17 to 7. Make use of the service opportunity then. I think Kieran have been struggling serving onto the tee with Sam hitting a number of winners, so good idea to mix it up maybe to the angle, but. 18 7. can kind of see from the body language uh, she needs looks quite distressed um, I know that the both Kieran and Shania can, can play a much better level in this and um, just haven't settled really Ian four shots in the rallies over 19-7 and that's just been the main difference here has been serve and return of serve That one hitting Chloe's racket on the way through. That was over. 8-19. Positive. That was over. Serve. 20 game point 8. 20 game point 8. And again, uh, a bit of a uh, non-contest in this game. And, and not really from the way Sam being overly clinical, but more from the unforced errors of the that was over. Nine. Again, 20. Though, it's uh, a lot of the time the players putting the pressure on that forces the, the arm force there. Yeah. You're in trying to flat serve on this but occasion. And, uh, and after the two big ease, but went for the still one. Right, so game. 21 9. Comprehensive first set victory for Sam and Chloe. And, um, first game won by Sam McGee and Chloe McGee. 21 9. Kind of taking the lead here, um, talking to her brother and, and you helping to settle into the game. And first set, they'll be disappointed because they know that they can yeah, play a lot better yeah. than that. Right. And, um, for them to lose so many points and serve and return a serve, it's it's not one of their characteristics. Normally, it's something that she needed would be very strong. Right. She would uh, pride herself on her third. Uh, shot and serve, set it up, mixing it right, serve sometimes to the tee. And uh, I've seen her play a number of uh, matches, and she's very intelligent at the end of the court and, and she uses the left hand so well. So um, sometimes first sets can go away like that. And for the McGee, still they'll, they'll look to you know, just, you know keep that control and keep the the chambers away from the rallying and and uh, keep that. Control of winning the second game. Points and the ball. On. Yeah, that's what they'll be looking to do. Hey. Not let them settle into the game at all. Uh, One love. Serve. 
Yeah. 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 Please just please ready on the third shot. Yeah. Something's gonna have to change if we're gonna get into this game. Really tight return there for Sinead. Yeah. But really had to be it's it's risky play too, it has it's it's, it has to be really tight. Oh. Yeah, good serve from Chloe and a lovely stop uh, in front of Chloe this time. So we're getting into the rally there again. Chloe finding everything at the front of the court today. Service over. We haven't Two, seen Sam on one. the circle very much. No. Sam coming forward now. Yeah. He's obviously getting a bit bored down the back there. Yeah. And with Chloe. Yeah, clash again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Great defense there by Chloe. 3 1. Very aggressive from Sam. <laughs> with Chloe playing uh, Lady Singles at the top level as well, she's quite confident to take the back of the court. It's not like the traditional days, Thomas, of the, yeah. the lady playing around the tee and the man covering yeah. two quarters of the court. Nowadays, some of the best pairs in the world. Uh, you can see them in this formation. Uh, if you remember Thomas Leiborn and Camilla Ryder Yule, a lot of the time, the, the, one of the top Danish pairs, Camilla would be at the back of the court and Thomas would be pushing forward and quite comfortable to stay there. Right. Again, uh, Four, one. An easy mistake. Yeah. Aaron's been playing well this weekend and his men's doubles and has made it all the way to the final there. Um, I know he'll be, he'll be looking forward to playing Sam later on in that as well, but um, just be able to get that backward working here. And, and interestingly, Sam seems quite comfortable to flick serve yeah. here on as well. Good use of the cross reverse in front of Sam, making one. him move uh, from the deep position to the front court, and something that the they're using quite often is when they're on the attack, sometimes power, sometimes soft, and it's a good variation. For another side, uh, we have the number two seeds coming through, Tony Murphy and Jenny King, beating uh, five one. Cousins and Katrina Farrell, 21-12, 21-14. So, Tony and Jenny, it's Last year's finalist. Service over. Again, Two, five. Making it through to the final this season. So, so good recovery by Jenny there to... A good bounce back after yeah. the lady singles yeah. earlier where she was struggling to breathe. and It'll be good for her confidence with the ladies double Three, mixed doubles five. coming up. So. Let's see who's right. going to be facing them. So 3-5. <laughs> Sam right really... You can just see him, he's just putting Kieran under so much pressure. It's just, uh, yeah. it's just the it's difference just at the minute. Yeah. Uh, Sam or Chloe step up to get 2-3 three, three points. Every yeah. time the Chambers are on serve, they can only score maybe 1-2 at the most. Great sure. job by yeah. Kieran Chambers. Being that aggressive over. coming forward. Four, we need six. to see more of that. Now, Thomas, we're going to see a run of serves here. Variation from seeing it this time using the flick. Sure. That's better, yeah, yeah. getting Chloe to the back of the court and now can they use her? Good shot by Sam again, not moving it around. <laughs> Definitely the best rally of the game so far. And again, the variation from the rear court from Sam. Seven, over, seven four. Bring up the, the chambers on their defence. Yeah. And dropping the shot right on the tee. Right on the tee, yeah. Left-handed, right-handed partnership. Who goes for it? Great play by Chloe. She's oh, yeah. constant pressure. She need uh, starting to come out a little bit more now and uh, to help her brother. I, th I think oh. that it's uh, oh, it's unfortunate. Almost playing level Four. doubles. Almost playing it? level doubles. You see, she needs really kind of taking a, a step away from the front court. She hadn't been winning up there, and now you're playing a little bit more defense, trying to move the McGee's around. But uh, that tactic again isn't working too well for them. But, but at least it gives the McGee's something to think about as well. You know, exactly, mixes it up yeah. and. Oh, oh. oh. 
here. 9-4. <laughs> that definitely would have been a, an action replay worth seeing if that had stayed in. But you can see, obviously, Sinead came in to cover the net and then... Good start of the rally that time. Uh, I like the way that Sinead blocked straight onto Chloe and forced the lift. Um, I think the main difference in this game so far has been when Chloe and Sam have been on attack. Seven's Sam's over, five, critical. nine. Uh, and the difference when Kieran has been on attack, they haven't been able to get through. Great return here by Sam. See yeah, the third shot there and Kieran was in big trouble. Yeah. Ten, yeah. five. And not necessarily a bad serve, but just Sam is just on it so quick. Six there, bringing Sinead Eleven, to play five, and interval. in front of her. Again, they're looking to move Sinead from front to back. Um, so, uh, a more positive end for the Chambers. Um, we've seen some rallies there, and they're looking quite relaxed in their defence, but um, just feeling then to counter-attack. And when they're on the attack here in working hard from the back of the court but Louis and Sam still looking quite comfortable yeah and well the, the yeah, obviously you can see the, the class of playing super series coming through here and, and European championships and looking at the uh, 11 in the last tournament in Iceland uh, for the finals in the, in the mixed doubles so quite a good one for those guys. well five So a seven point lead here for the second game. Good shot Seven's there by Kieran. Six, so 12. The Chambers at the minute, 212 in the, the world rankings. And um, facing here a pair who's currently number 40 in the world. So you can see uh, over. Sam and Chloe at their best of being up at 13, 6. She uh, needed Chambers when she was at her highest ranking, she was up at 126. So um, there's just that bit of a difference in level and you can see in the first three shots always it's uh, the McGee's coming out on top and 14 and six doubles and level doubles it's so important that you can force the attack and the control of it from there and that's what's been happening so far <laughs> Service over. Seven fourteen. Oh, see. Makes me feel human. <laughs> Seven fourteen. Service oh, over. Fifteen yeah. seven. But I suppose he's trying to push Gloria out of position, and yeah, it's good to see that yeah. he's he's trying to do something different yeah. and trying to take her away from the net. Um, he's clever here in Chambers and. Uh, he's played really in a really smart doubles on his way through um, a reset victory over Sam's younger brother 16, Joshua seven. and uh, his partner David Walsh. So um, a first final for both Kieran and Ryan uh, in the men's doubles discipline. So very good. Mm. <laughs> <Over. It's> Thomas, <laughs> it's sixteen. A broken string yep. to go with it. Yeah. These players, brackets, 30 pounds of tension nowadays. I was about to ask, yeah, what, what, do you know what Sam so actually um, sets his head about? Sam would have between 8 and 10 rackets in the bag, and yeah. during the tournament, uh, when they're playing both doubles and mixed disciplines, we'll do quite a lot of rackets, right. so it's... Um, you have his at about 30, yeah? You have around yeah. 30 pounds of tension in the racket, so it's really important now to put the string straight away after. Yeah. Nine. 16. Yes, I so, uh, learned. I learned the hard way. I didn't cut the strings on the nice racket I won about a year and a half ago, and brought it into the shop. And he said, "Not a chance. Crack on the frame." And, yeah. and he says, "What happens if yeah, I didn't cut the strings?" <laughs> That's the risk of stringing the racket so tight. Yeah. Out. Yeah. 17-9. So 17-9 here. Mickey's well in control here. Clever shot back here and they're finding the mix court and uh, making them do something different but again back on the defence. I felt that after that shot back here and into the middle of the court, they could have capitalised and got on the attack there but uh, unfortunately 
again the shot after that was a, a lift and back on defence I mean, because obviously Shanae is holding back a bit as well that he he's having to come into positions that he doesn't really necessarily want to be in exactly yeah she's not challenging the front of the court because 19-9 I felt that maybe that they aren't competing in that area so her taking that step back relieves a bit of pressure off the way and we can control the game That was over. Crazy 10, angle. 19. No, it, was, no, it didn't go over. Yeah, I was saying. Too much angle. Too yeah, much. yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> it's sometimes hard to tell here from the commentary booth here. Number of uh, simple mistakes from Chloe and Sam now. Uh, maybe just a little bit uh, complacent now that they've got the lead and they've got the open set. Ah, uh, another no. mistake. Oh. Twenty. That must be it. Match four. Point eleven. Yeah. This set, yeah. Um, Match point. At this level, you just can't afford to miss no. that amount of serves. No. <laughs> okay. That's right. game. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, when the Chambers watch this match back, they'll be um, a little bit disappointed because they're, they're playing a lot of international Bampton now and they definitely can... Uh, you can play at this level, but match one by they, Sam McGee, really Toy McGee, 21 9, 21 11. I felt that Sinead got a little bit defensive and uh, came back at the front of the court, and uh, then the McGee's just were able to control the front of the court and, and, and take a two set victory. So that's it for our morning session. Um, finals are starting at 2 o'clock. So, gives everybody a chance maybe to maybe put the kettle on, uh, get a bite to eat. We might go off and get a little bite to eat ourselves, Dan. Yeah. And um, we'll be back here in our finals. Uh, our first match will be. Not sure yet, actually. Do I know? Just looking up here in the tournament surfer. No updates yet here, so look, tune in here at 2 o'clock, bamtown.tv, and uh, we should have some five excellent finals, and see you soon. Thank, Thank you much. See you then.